Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of a Frugal Athlete Podcast. Uh, before we get started, we had to do this episode. It was so good, we had to do it twice. Uh, unfortunately, on my end, I don't know where the first uh, recording went, but um, Carly, Carly DeFelice, the creator of Best Money Class Ever, is back again. Um, someone that I'm excited to connect with, someone that's doing a lot of great things in the financial space. Um, so we're going to hear all about her, all about what she's up to and how to be smarter with your money. So Carly, how are you doing today? Doing good. It's, uh, I'm here in Austin, Texas, so it's hot as usual, but we're good. <laughs> uh, most definitely is it's super hot. Um, so let's get right into it. First and foremost, thank you so much for taking the time again, uh, to get this done. Um, but for the people that may not know you, Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I uh, studied finance at the University of Texas and I graduated in December of 2008, right when the financial market completely crashed. And um, I just remember walking into my finance uh, professor's office hours and just kind of being like, what should I do about this whole job thing? And uh, at the time I owed about $35,000 in student loans and a car loan. Um, but by age 26, I completely paid everything off and then also saved over hundred K. Um, and so I basically really wanted to get into finance. I found that it was something I was naturally good at. So with coffee in hand and my laptop, I took what I learned studying finance and created best money class ever a live and virtual four week personal finance class. So I help other people pay off debt and build their savings and turn things around with money. No, I love that. Mm -hmm. Um, Real quick, because obviously 2008 was a a crazy time. We've been through our own situation now with the pandemic and then, you know, gas prices going crazy, inflation. If someone were to graduate now, similar to when you graduated in 08, what are some of the immediate things that you would tell them to look out for? So I would say um, live below your, your means, live yeah. well below your means. And I know a lot of times when you graduate, there's overwhelm, there's anxiety. It might even be a little bit like sadness or depression, just kind of like, you know, I went to college, I followed all the steps, things didn't really pan out how I thought. And so I would just say, even though it's really difficult, um, you do have to look at where you are with your money right Mm -hmm. now. And even if it's not pretty, um, and then kind of be open to uh, setting goals of where you want to be in the future to turn things around. No, I love that. And you talked about like understanding where you are. So you graduate college, finance degree in hand, um, you find yourself in a situation um, so you have a, I don't want to say come to Jesus moment, but you have an aha moment. What yeah. steps did you take in the step in the, in the sense of, all right, I'm going to get out, th- out of this, this hole and I'm, then I'm going to prosper and reach the next, the next level. Yes. So I had like this aha moment actually before I graduated college. And so, um, when I was in college, I did this crazy summer sales internship and, um, my income was basically, <laughs> it was completely commission-based. So my first summer, my sales were so-so. My next summer, I improved. And then the next summer, I became a top sales rep and it was an Inc. 500 company. Okay. And so um, they, at the time, like it was the, it was actually like Inc. 500 is the fastest 500 growing companies in the nation. And so I was on top of the world. And they gave me a car bonus, $500 to go towards any car. And so I was um, junior in college, 21. This is like a lot of student athletes or um, professional athletes. You, When you first start making money, instead of paying off the loans that you have, culturally, it's super common to just go out and just instead of paying that off, borrow more money. And so I went out and I bought a brand spanking new white Mercedes Benz. 
<laughs> and um, yeah, I thought I was just like baller, shot caller, and kind of the mentality of a lot of athletes too is you're like, you know what? I worked really, really hard for social yeah. media discipline. I deserve this. And um, for me, I thought, what could possibly go wrong? My car payments were, I did have to take a loan out in my name. My car payments were like 560, but they were giving me $500 a month. And so that was before I graduated, that was 2007. And the company completely went bankrupt. Um, and so I learned really fast the hard way is that I did not want to look rich and have nice things. Um, I wanted to actually build true wealth. Um, and so what was the original question on that? <laughs> oh, no, no, that's a, that's a great point. I, I love that you yeah. brought that up in the sense of, you know, when you you reach a goal, you know, whether it's you make it pro or you reach the sales bonus, yeah. uh, you want to uh, reward yourself. You want to spoil yourself. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's about, you know, paying off what you already owe versus, you know, getting new things. But when it came to the situation of, you know, graduating in 2008 you know you have a finance degree but you're you're in debt and yeah. you want to get out of this debt what steps did you take uh to immediately you know start that 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 new journey yeah so the first thing like i said is kind of knowing where you stand um and so i being kind of a finance grad and a little bit of a geek on money, I uh, I teach my best money class ever students also to become CFO, manage your money like a boss. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is um, I freaking love financial statements because they actually give you a really good feel where you are. So as that new college grad, um, don't do what I did and like borrow more money. You want to see where you are right now. And so your balance sheet is just it's like a snapshot or a picture of exactly where you stand. So you, as unfortunate as it is, you want to see how much you have and the credit cards or student loans or any kind of debt. And then also take a look at your assets, which is any savings or investments that you may have started. And then your net worth is your assets minus liabilities. So, um, and this is kind of the opposite of having like the head in the ground, like ostrich approach. This is actively, you know, as a college grad, that's probably the first step is just seeing exactly where you are right now. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's really important. And, then, you know, obviously there's talk different ways of getting out of debt. You know, you got the Dave Ramsey method, you got the snowball, you got the avalanche. There's other ways. Is there a specific way that you were able to get out of debt or one way that you recommend outside of getting the class that we will have in the show notes? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. So I kind of came up with this own method because there's the avalanche, there's the snowball. I created, it's called the Spartan method. Uh, yes. I was hoping you would say that because <laughs> yeah, I remember when you brought Spartan that up. Method. Okay. Um, and so you've probably seen the movie 300 where the 300 Spartans fought against this much larger Persian army. And I think it was like Gerard Butler who played the king. And there's like this intensity where he's just like the key line that comes to my mind is they're like, Sparta, this is where we fight. And it's just like, whoa. Um, and so you do not get in debt overnight. So you won't get out of debt without a really good fight. So part of it is just a, a mentality of having discipline structure endurance just like the spartans yeah. but then um the kind of system to it is what you'll do is you'll line up all of your debt and so if you have a couple student loans i know there's a lot of changes since we've last talked with uh student loans and loan forgiveness and everything but um where you are right now you'll line up what you owe in student loans if you have a car loan payday loan iou um any kind of loans and you'll have essentially um, the minimum payments in your interest rates. And then I want you to pay and push to pay an extra Spartan amount of 300 or more towards the highest interest debt. Okay. And so I say 
300 because like the Spartans, it's small enough that pretty much anyone can do it by cutting a few things or bringing in an extra income, but it's big enough to really make traction towards paying off debt. Yeah. Do you have any recommendations on, you know, obviously eliminating a few things you could do stuff like get rid of Netflix or, you know, yeah. take a public transportation instead of driving. But in terms of the making extra income, what are some suggestions you have there? Yeah. Well, I feel like now more than ever, it's uh, a lot easier to bring in an extra income. So there's the gig culture of um, you can work at Amazon or Uber or dog walking or Airbnb. Um, but the biggest thing that I recommend is look at how and where you already spend your time and then just find a way to make money doing that. So for example, I had a student who always was like hitting the gym, working out like every day, and he grew up playing soccer also. Yeah. And so he ended up finding a side hustle as a soccer trainer. And so he ended up bring in an extra income and he was able to pay off like eight thousand dollars his the rest of his um credit card and car loan within like four months and it was doing wow. something that he was passionate about and it was kind of already built into his schedule like working out kind of fitness uh related so that's what i would start with is look at where um you're naturally inclined to already spend that time and find a way to make money doing it no, that's great advice. Uh, I love that. Like, start with what you're already good at. I think a lot of times people see the average millionaire has seven, uh, sorry, has seven income streams, but, you know, it's building one income stream and then having rivers come from that instead of having seven different rivers, if that makes, if that makes sense. Um, let, let's, let's get into it. Best money club. That's a big statement, but I, I'm sure you're ready to back it up. So talk about um, the best money class ever, some of the principles and the modules. Obviously, if you want to learn more about it, check out the show notes because we're going to have the description there. Um, but for the folks that want to learn more about it, what is the best money class ever? Why is it the best money class ever? And what are some of the principles that they should be expected to learn? Yeah, so, okay, best money class ever is a four-week live and virtual personal finance class. So I know managing money is hard AF and it's <laughs> something that no one needs to do on their own. And it's also very taboo. And so um, it's a chance to have, you know, an evening carved out just for you where you can at home grab a beer or a wine and learn about money. So there's one night each week over four weeks. And each week there is a lesson with a challenge. So you're challenged to act. So the first challenge is how to become chief financial officer and manage your money like a boss. So um, a lot of people hate budgets, yeah. but um, but basically uh, kind of, I always say like Taylor Swift style, like haters are gonna hate, 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 but you need to shake it off. And so learn <laughs> like the foundation with, you know, finance 101, like I said, I freaking love financial statements. So you'll yeah. see where you stand. You'll see your um, spending patterns and we'll create a budget for the upcoming year. And then uh, the second week, the challenge is to get out of debt and to stop impulsive online spending, which is a huge thing that's kind of increased, I would say, with the pandemic. Oh yeah, for sure. Isolated and it's so easy just to add items to your card and take items out and it's just this whole thing filled with guilt, remorse, and shame. And so I teach how to overcome that. Um, and then the third challenge is to live within your means and to stop keeping up with the Kardashians because after all, most reality stars do go broke. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. so we talk about just like practical tips to live large and to do all the fancy pants brunches and the travel and all that things that, you know, most of us in our generation want to do, but to do it uh, within your budget. Within the budget, then, that makes uh, a lot of sense. Lastly, uh, the fourth challenge is to start investing confidently. Okay. So I'll teach exactly how uh, retirement accounts work and 
stock market and all those things. Yeah, obviously, there's a lot of different ways to invest your money, whether it's alternative investments, stocks, bonds, real estate. Do you have a preference? I know we can't get into like, you should invest in this because we're not a financial advisors, but yeah. do you have like a preference that has worked for you or worked for people that you work with? Yeah, so I'm an index fund girl all the way. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times now you'll hear about, you know, crypto or picking like the next big stock and um, index funds instead of, you know, evaluating the market and seeing what goes up and down and all of that. Um, they found in the long run, if you just follow the market at large, um, you end up outperforming most actively managed funds. For and some folks, they may not know what index funds are all about. Do you mind giving us uh, uh, index funds 101 explanation? Index funds 101. So um, the two things that I like about it is they cost less and you earn more. So anytime you're investing, one of the things you'll want to look at is the fees. So yeah. a lot of times you'll pick basically a mutual fund. And what that means is essentially uh, you and I and hundreds and thousands of other people mutually fund um, different companies and stocks and bonds that some super smart like business analysts um, evaluates and hand picks. Um, and so typically though, those mutual funds have fees of one to 3%. Uh, and NerdWallet estimated over your lifetime, those fees alone can cost you $590,000. Crazy. Um, I saw that graph from NerdWallet the other day. Yes. And then, so index funds, instead of having like this fund manager who's handpicking all the stocks, an index fund simply follows a portion of the market at large. So the fees that instead of being one to 3%, they're as low as like 0.15%, uh, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but because of the long run and compound interest, this makes a huge impact. Um, and then historically, they also earn more. So the stock market in the long run earns 10%. And so it's kind of like a win-win. <laughs> what you're investing in costs less and you earn more. So it's um, kind of like a passive hands-off approach to investing. No, I appreciate that. Do you have like an example of what an index fund like S&P 500 um is I, we're not going to get into your finances but uh for folks that want to follow you know yeah. carly's index fund strategy yeah, yeah. and real okay. quick before you start uh disclaimer this is yeah, not yeah. financial advice this is all educational and yeah. informational advice uh please consult with your financial team or experts before you make any financial moves yes <laughs> yes yes okay so um, so you, you probably turn on the news and you hear like the S&P 500 or the Dow, you know, so S&P 500, that just stands for standard and force. Uh, it's 500 large cap, you know, the largest companies in America. And so that is one index fund and it consists of, like I said, those 500 different companies. Yeah. So I'm a fan of what's called a target date index fund nice yeah so um so it's really cool you just pick the target date that you want to retire and uh, it automatically adjusts as you approach your retirement so a lot of times people especially millennials or gen um, z are like freaked out by the stock market because yeah. these recessions and um so one thing that if especially now you're like oh should i start investing Things are kind of crazy. Is there going to be this massive crash? The stock market's already gone down quite a bit this year. And the thing is, is we have what's called a long time horizon. So yeah. we have like 30, 40 plus years until we reach retirement. So it gives you exposure to the stock market when you're young. And then it gets more conservative once you are closer to your retirement age. So I think they're pretty cool. 
no, that's that's amazing. Thank you so much for uh, sharing that. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about is um, something you brought up, the latte factor. Can you give us that explanation and what that's all about? Okay, so the latte factor is something that a, an author, David Bach, kind of coined. And in the personal finance world, people like love it or they hate it. <laughs> Um, you know, a lot of times people are like, so the, the idea behind the latte factor is that instead of spending five bucks on coffee every single day, if you just simply invest that amount, you know, you could be over the course of your lifetime, like a millionaire. Yeah. And, um, and so I think, um, the takeaway from it is just that sometimes the little purchases do add up and make a big difference. Um, I know kind of the millennial take on on all of this though is like but I want my latte <laughs> and uh, you know that's important to me so if that's you I I kind of go with the mindset instead of exactly the latte factor more of like spend money in line with your values yeah. and so um so a good exercise is if you go through all of the transactions you make in a month and you just see line by line where all that money is going. And I always ask my students, okay, do this exercise, come back and tell me like, you know, how you've heard the same, like you are what you eat. Yeah. I think that you are what you spend money on. Oh, I like that. I'm writing that down. Sorry. Are what you spend money on. And so when you look at all of your transactions, you'll see very clear pattern. You want to ask yourself, like, if I am what I spend money on, then what would I be? <laughs> and then more importantly, does that fit my values? So I have people who come back and they're like, oh my gosh, I knew it was bad, but I didn't know it was that bad. And they're like, if I was what I spent, I'd be Target. And, <laughs> you know, it's um, it's very eye-opening. So back to the latte factor, though, like, if you see where your money is going and a latte is something that genuinely... <laughs> brings you joy and that's your thing then go for it um, but do realize that um, if you are spending a lot of money on things that aren't important to you to really realign and adjust so for me at a very young age having a secure future was so important to me so having where I was investing was was top of my priority no, I like that a lot. I, I, I appreciate you bringing up the latte factor from the standpoint of like, it allows us to understand where we had, may have some weaknesses. So for me, it may not be, I don't even drink coffee, but my, my thing is my Uber factor. I take Ubers unnecessarily. Oh yeah. So it's like, all right, you obviously, you know, sometimes you need to take Ubers, but is there a place like you can walk or do you really need to not drive here? So understanding yeah our factors and like playing having a having a course of action against that i think is really important yes. um, one th one thing i wanted to ask you carly obviously you've had a lot of people in your classes um what's one common misconception around money that people ask you or that you found with you know all the clients and people that you work with yeah, one reaction that I get once people get a financial education is um, like, wow, I realized that I can actually be social and also good with money. So a lot of times people think it's either or, like if you're good with money, that means you're going to stay at home and have no social life, no happy hours, no eating yeah. out, no whatever, no fun. And um, that is actually nothing further from the truth. So I really believe when you have a plan with money, you can do more of the things that you love in life. So like I um, have gone to over 20 countries. Hey, amazing. And like travel. And I um, currently live full-time in an RV. And I take these, um, last year I took a one month trip. And then previous to that, I took like a six month trip. And so, um, like I said, when you have a plan, um, you can kind of, see where your values are and make sure money goes towards that and then doesn't go towards the things that you don't care about oh, that's, that's really cool um any last thing oh no i was going to ask you another question but 
you're going to FinCon. So at the time of this recording, it is the end of August. FinCon is September 7th through 10th, 2022. Yeah. So it's an exciting time. If you're not familiar with FinCon, make sure you get acquainted. Um, it's where financial creators and educators connect. Is that the best way to put it? Yes, I think that one of the tagline is like money, money nerds unite. So it's, yeah. um, yes. So as someone that creates content in the financial space, where do you see the, this lane going moving forward? And how can we avoid getting our information from some of the wrong people, if that makes sense? So where is financial education going in the future? Yeah, um, education, financial content um that 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 lane hmm well i think that financial education i really do think that like tiktoks and instagram um people are going online um for fun but then people also like to go online and learn so i think that kind of the trend is is just um we can consume what is you know, once a complex idea and short little um, tidbits that are educational and fun and you learn something. Um, so I definitely see an increase in that. Um, I do think that financial education um, might be something that we'll see more in mainstream school. So like in kindergarten through high school, they don't really teach about it. So hopefully, <laughs> um, something at large um, society-wise, hopefully one day we'll get to the point where it's like, oh, wait, we manage money every single day. We yeah. don't always use calculus, but <laughs> um, hopefully uh, that will change in the future. Perfect. No, that's really, that's really, I, I really think that's important, like having education in the schools, but not like from a practical standpoint, we need to understand how to budget, how to save, how to set goals, how to get out of debt. And that's just frankly something that's not um, not prevalent across the board. So, you know, going to TikTok and Instagram where you can get it in that short form, bite-sized content in an educating, but also entertaining way. Uh, yeah. That's what it's all about. So talk about your content journey, because I know you're on TikTok and I know you have this cat this course. What's what's next for Carly, the content creator? Yeah, so I um, I have been doing my class in speaking engagements for almost 10 years. So it's been a while. And yeah. so I've been a little bit late to like the social media game, um, but I'm wanting to reach more people. And so I have the last year or two have been pumping out little bitty TikToks and reels. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's kind of where I'm, I'm looking to grow, um, and put content out there. So one, one thing that I'm thinking about is, um, so, you know, part of my story is having the debt and then paying that off and then saving hundred K. Um, one thing that I want to put out on social media, since it's been a minute, <laughs> I'm not 26 anymore. Um, so I'm kind of removed from all of that. Is I want to go back in a, a short form <laughs> way, um, show exactly how I did that, like oh, what wow. exactly was my pay, and then my income and my expenses, and out of that, how much I was putting towards debt, how much I was putting towards retirement, and kind of just really pulling, you know, peeling back the curtain so people can see uh, what really happened and how, you know, maybe somewhat. So for me during that time frame, I was only making like average pay. And so hopefully that can be kind of a motivator of like, oh, if Carly, you know, I was making like 50, 60 K, which is, you know, decent pay, but it's nothing to like write home about. Yeah. So if I'm able to turn things around at a young age, then, you know, hopefully they, they can get that inspiration to do it for themselves too. No, most definitely. That's that's really important. Um, you sharing your story so people can gravitate towards that and learn. 
Uh, one thing before I let you go, you talked about your initial role in college, you know, working in sales, and obviously you had to sell your courses and, you know, opportunity to do speaking engagements. Yeah. Athletes, you know, they transition in many different forms, but one avenue that they do well is sales. So what would be your one trick or piece of advice as it pertains to, you know, making that sale or, you know, excelling in the concept of sales? Yeah, so for me, I've always, I don't think I was, even though I did sales in college, I would not consider myself like a sales person. Um, so I always have the mentality of it's, I'm not selling, I'm serving. The more people you serve, the more customers you'll get. Yeah. Um, so I was selling home security systems and I legitimately believed in security. Yeah. Um, and so I really encourage people when they're starting off, even if it's not necessarily sales, even if it's like, oh, I want to be a content creator or I want to be a author, or whatever, to focus on putting in the time. Um, so I literally would like log the hours that I spent cold calling and the number of people that I would talk to. And I would focus my goals on that. You know, I may or may not get the sell and it's totally okay. Cause I don't want people to get something that they don't want. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to, you know, go out there and find people that this really could help. So focusing on your hours and kind of thinking in terms of the ancient law of averages. And so, um, so the more people you see, the more people you'll sell with best money class ever. I started getting into public speaking and I've been a speaker with over 65 organizations. Awesome. And most of those like universities like TCU and UT and Texas A&M and um so a lot of those they didn't just come knocking on my door it was something that I reached out to them and so even though I have been a speaker with 65 groups you know I, I reached out to hundreds and hundreds of others that didn't quite work out so keep in mind a lot of averages no, I really like that. You're coming out with the quotes today. The more people you see, the more people you'll sell. Uh, like you said, it's a numbers game and the law averages do well in your favor. Just like when you're playing sports, you know, the more you put in to your work, uh, the better chance you'll have to get playing time and, you know, perform on the field. So uh, for the athletes, as it pertains to not only on the field, but off the field, I think that's sound advice. Uh, Carly, what's next for you in your world? What's what you got going on? What, how can people get excited for what you, uh, how can they support what's, uh, what's on your, what's on your Rolodex? What's on my Rolodex? Um, and so, yeah, like I said, I'm going to be cranking out a lot of content on TikTok and Instagram. And my big project that I really want to do is, is kind of show behind the scenes of, um, exactly how I saved a hundred K, um, coming up in the next month or so I'll have a free workshop if you're kind of like yeah you know I've been thinking about getting out of debt um I have um it's called the ultimate guide to managing money and mm -hmm. so I teach a step-by-step -step plan on how to pay off debt how to invest um and then best money class ever I'll have my last fall session starting um starting soon nice. so yeah and do the best money class session four times a year, every quarter, or how does yeah. it work? Yeah, so best money class ever is offered um, quarterly. So okay. um, the last session, so I know a lot of people wait till like January to be <laughs> setting goals, but if um, like now is really the time to start planning out, we can get everything set up and ready for your financial goals for the next year right now, so. That's what it's all about. Um, any last money quotes, money recommendations, money resources, advice that you have for the listeners? Well, how about what my girl Fergie said? If things are tight, remember Fergie. She said, if you ain't got no money, take your broke self. Home. <laughs> so um, that's like the non-budget budget is just like, if you don't have money, 
stop buying things right (laughs) there's plenty of ways to have fun without having to spend money so you know understand your situation like you said understand where you are now um that's not where you're always going to be um but if you set goals and you know climb out the hole that you unfortunately are in things can look brighter so i really like that advice sometimes the the most simplest advice is the hardest to follow but at the end of the day that's what it's all about yeah and definitely i know there are people out there who feel like i said totally overwhelmed um i do want you to know if that's you if you're feeling anxious about money and it's stressful you're losing sleep um i do if if that's you i do want you to know that no matter where you are right now even if you're paycheck to paycheck even if you have six figures in debt um you really can turn things around um all you need is just a solid plan and a financial education so you can do it so how your finances are right now um your money mistakes from your 20s and college they don't have to last a lifetime exactly um uh, and then lastly star i keep saying lastly um yeah. Can you please share your socials for anyone that's wanting to connect with you? We're also going to have it in the show notes. Make sure you check out the show notes. We're going to have the best money class ever. We're going to have Carly's information. Um, So if you want to connect with her, but this is a chance if you're more audio um, for her to share it and uh, let you go. Yeah. Okay. So best money class ever. Um, My website is bestmoneyclassever.com. If you head there, um, you can actually get started now uh, with a guide on how to start a plan to pay off debt and invest so you'll get this 20 page downloadable guide um you'll have like a money survey to see um where you stand with money and debt tracker and all the things um and then on social best money class ever it's just that it's best money class ever tiktok and instagram and then i am on facebook and then Um, doing a little on Pinterest, but I'm really putting my focus, uh, best money class ever uh, is TikTok and Instagram right now. So. No, love that. Well, thank you so much, Carly. Once again, we appreciate you for coming back on to the show. Yes. Uh, It really means a lot. I love some of the things that you said, especially the Spartan method. I think, uh, you know, having unique ways to attack different problems because there's no, there's many ways to the top of the mountain. Um, everyone's financial journey or financial approach is different. Um, so appreciate you sharing that advice and uh, we look forward to connecting again soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, have a great day. All right. Any-